welcome to this video about Corky being captured and sent to doggy jail, as told by Corky and narrated by Dad. It was late night when the doggy police swooped in as I was searching for a good place to hide until morning. A flying machine was in the sky above me, shining a bright spotlight in the dark. A human used a loudspeaker and barked out, down on the ground, and then, no, that's sit, lay down flat on the ground. They yelled again, no, 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 that's sit, flat on the ground or we open fire, and then, don't move, we got you surrounded. Finally, a lady slipped the noose around my neck and I was off to doggy jail. Okay, so maybe there never was a helicopter. That part could have been a dream. It didn't matter, because the next morning at the pet shelter, that was my first day of a new life. I did not know then how safe and happy I would feel and how quickly that bad news would be good news. The people at the doggy jail were all nice humans. They keep puppies like me safe, feed you every day, and introduce you to people with a new place to live. I was kept alone in my jail cell with a back exit to a fenced-in play area. I had plenty of clean water, a soft blankie, food twice a day, and the only upset was big dogs who made constant loud barking. People who worked in the doggy jail poked and prodded me, giving me a health checkup. I passed, so then I moved from evaluation to adoptable, where I had to wait for a human who wanted me to live in their home. Other dogs were too old or sick to be adoptable, and they disappeared. Some were healthy, but not enough people visit the shelter to rescue every pet, so even perfect dogs and cats go to doggy heaven. I did get adopted, which I'll explain in the next video about my interview. Those pals I left behind that were too old or sick or stayed past their time made me sad and scared. So if you can make room for a pet, please visit a pet shelter near you. Many of my four-legged friends are waiting.